So you've created a trust, now what? I'm Anna Solomon of Fiduciary Trust, and this is my colleague, Daniel Lorenzen from Venable LLP. We're both attorneys with backgrounds in estate planning and trust administration, and we're here to talk about the basics of trust administration. So living trusts are a very common part of an estate plan in California. Once you've created a living trust, you should fund your trust, meaning that you should put all of your assets, bank accounts, real property, et cetera, in the name of the living trust. Daniel, now that you have this trust and you funded it, who is in charge of the assets that are in this trust now? Well, the person who manages the assets in a trust is called the trustee. This means that they own the trust property on behalf of the beneficiaries. They pay the trust bills and they collect any amounts that are due to the trust. During life, most people act as the trustee of their own trust. Although many people serve as trustees of their own living trust until they become incompetent or die, others decide they need assistance, maybe because they're too busy or too inexperienced, or they don't want to manage their day-to-day -day financial affairs. Now, when you die, the person or persons you named as successor trustees will take over. This process normally happens automatically and usually requires a minimum amount of paperwork. It's important to name backup trustees in case the person you name is unwilling or unable to take on the job. This role is very similar to what an executor of a will does. The successor trustee identifies and collects the trust assets and administers and distributes the assets according to the instructions you provided. Anna, do you have any thoughts on who you might name or appoint as your successor trustee or executor? So as lawyers, right, we get this question a lot. Uh, who should I appoint as my trustee or executor? And my answer is, it's really your decision. You can name your spouse, your partner, maybe one or all of your children can act as co-trustees or co-executors. You can even, even name some relatives or trusted friends and business partners. Sometimes people name professional fiduciaries or a bank or a trust company to act as trustee or executor. It's really your choice. You don't need any special training to act in this capacity, but you probably want to appoint someone who's organized, prudent, responsible, and honest. What I would suggest, though, is that you discuss your choice with your estate planning attorney because, uh, you know, sometimes issues may come up. So, for example, if you appoint your business associate, are there any conflicts of interest that may arise? So just be sure to discuss your choice with your estate planning attorney if you have one. Now let's talk about how a living trust functions if you become incapacitated. Now this means that you've lost the mental ability to manage your own financial affairs, such as paying your bills, for example. If you are the trustee of your own living trust and you become incapacitated, your chosen successor trustee would manage the trust assets for you. If your assets were not in a living trust, however, someone else would have to manage those assets for you. And how this would be accomplished might depend on whether you're married or whether you have a domestic partner and whether your assets are separate or community property. Also, you may have a document known as a financial power of attorney. Okay, now let's talk about how a living trust will help your heirs or beneficiaries upon your death. One of the main reasons why you create and fund a living trust is to avoid having to open a probate case in court. The assets held in your living trust can be managed by the trustee and distributed according to your directions without a court case and without the court being involved at all. This can save your heirs time and money. And because the trust would not be under the direct management of the probate court, your assets and the values of your assets and the names and information about your beneficiaries would not become a public record. Your heirs and beneficiaries would still be notified about the living trust and they are advised of their right to obtain a copy of the trust, however. And what are some of the other steps involved in administering a trust? Well, for one thing, a trustee must send regular financial statements, these are called an accounting, to the beneficiaries at least once a year and also generally keep them informed about what's going on. The accountings can be provided to the beneficiaries informally most of the time, or occasionally filed in court for all to review before the court approves them. 
And also, so you're a successor trustee of a trust of someone who passed away. At what point does the trust administration wind down or end? And the answer to this question is, well, it depends on the trust terms. So some trusts distribute outright to beneficiaries. So after you administer your trust, so after you, you know, gather your assets, pay the creditors, file tax returns, give notice to beneficiaries, etc., you can then distribute the trust assets directly to the beneficiaries, and you, then you can finish the administration. But other trusts distribute assets in trust. This means that the assets will go to the successor trust for the benefit of the beneficiaries. So in essence, the trust continues on. You may be the trustee of those successor trusts. And then in that case, you would then have to administer those trusts according to its terms. So again, to answer this question, it all depends on what the trust says.